I thank God for the ship. We're going to another level. I am assured that.
Missionary Baptist Church. Come on, good morning to you, 9th Street Missionary Baptist Church. It is yet another Sunday morning in which the Lord has made and created, and somebody ought to be screaming, I'm glad about it. Come on, come on, shout out there today that I'm simply glad about this day that we know as Sunday. I am glad about this day that we know as Sunday. Tell somebody it's some good things that happen on Sunday. I need somebody to just shout out it's some good things that happen on Sunday. What happens on Sunday? Men and women are saved. Hallelujahs are going up. Blessings are coming down. Tell somebody it's some good stuff that happens on Sunday morning. Amen. 
Amen. I invite, I invite continuously to invite everybody to this room. Come on, invite some folks to this room. Continuously to invite, like, and share. Go ahead and tag some folks and let them know that we have in worship this morning and somebody ought to be telling somebody about the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for you. If you're glad about it this morning, go ahead and tell somebody, I'm glad about what the Lord is about to do for me and for you. Tell somebody, say, I'm glad about what the Lord is about to do for you and for me. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory for the things that he has, he has done. Amen. I don't know about you, but I've been, I've been waiting all week to get here. Amen. I've been waiting all week to get to this place. Amen. And I'm asking now that you would literally go to your still place, go to your quiet place, so that you are able to hear the voice of the Lord on this morning. Come on, why don't you just go with me to your still place, to your quiet place, so that you are able to hear the voice of the Lord on this morning. Tell everybody in the house to just get quiet. Wherever you are, get quiet so we can hear the word. Amen. 30 to 45 minutes of the word of God that is going to come directly to you. To you, George Willis. To you, Richard. To you, uh, Zeke Johnson. To you, Helena. To you, uh, Kenya. To you, Stephanie. To you, Laurieann. To you, uh, Tatiana is coming to you on this morning. Listen, the word of God is coming to you, Chelsea. Listen, the word of God is coming to you, Lisa. Come on, the word of God to you is coming to you, Sean. Listen, I need you to hear the word of the Lord on this morning. Somebody tell Donnie Graham the word is coming to him on this morning and his whole household. Amen. Nene, the word is coming to you. Listen, the word is coming to everybody that's on this life. Heaven, this word is coming to you on this morning. I need you to be receptive to the word of God on this morning. Hear ye the word of God. Amen. This is our scripture for the month. It comes from Romans 8 and 28. It says, we know that all things work together for the good of those who love God, those who are called according to his purpose. Amen. Let us pray this morning. God of grace and God of mercy, thank you for the gathering of the saints. Thank you for this opportunity, God, to commune by way of your word. God, we are grateful this morning for everyone that have woke up, God, that you woke up out of their sleep. God, in a, a posture, God, of submission. God, I'm grateful this morning that you have allowed us to see the sun shine one more time. And God, I thank you for speaking to the winds and the waves, and we know that they simply obey you. And the reason why they obey you is because you are the maker and creator of those winds and those waves. Now, Father, thank you for being our creator. Thanking you for making us the way that you have made us. God, we are so grateful that you made us different, God. You separated your people. And God, now here it is. Because we have been separated, because we have been made different, God, we are able to go out and proclaim your gospel in a different way, in a different fashion. And God, on this day, God, we ask that somebody is educated by way of online ministry. We ask that someone is, is made the richer and the better, God. Somebody is educated by way of virtual on this morning. Now, Holy Spirit, we're asking that you would fall in this place. God, we ask now that the Holy Spirit, that you allow your Holy Spirit to fall and rest in this place. 
And God, it matters not where our location is. But God, we are gathered together, God, to hear a fresh word from on high. Now, God, use me as your instrument. Instrument. Play me as your instrument, God. And whatever instrument you want me to sound like on this morning, I ask now that you would create in me a clean heart and renew in me a right spirit so that they can hear this instrument be played uh, really, really plain, God, but also be played the way that you want to play it. God, I'm asking now that you would have mercy on me. God, I'm asking now that you would remove any fear, any doubt. And then, God, God, I ask now that you would remove any, 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 any ill will thoughts that I have in my mind, God. God, separate me right now, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. God, I need clear direction this morning to pour into your people. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. And we said together, amen, amen. Come on. Keep welcoming, folks, because it's preaching time. Go ahead and type in the comment section. Say, it's preaching time. Amen. It's preaching time. Amen. And I am excited about this word on this morning. The word comes from Psalms, Psalms 9 and 1 through 2. Psalms 9, Psalm 9, verse 1 through 2. Amen. And I really need y'all to get this this morning. Psalms 9, verse 1 through 2. Come on, share that today. Share that, put it in the comment section. Psalms 9, 1 through 2. Amen. And it reads... For the director of music to the tune of the death of the son, a psalm of David. Amen. The first verse reads, I will give thanks to you, Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of all your wonderful deeds. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing the praises of your, your name, O Most High. Come on, can I read this again to you because... I can't see you shouting, but I believe somebody got a shout in their spirit on this morning because of this word. It says in verse 1, can I read it with power and conviction? I will give thanks to you, Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of all your wonderful deeds. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing the praises of your name, O Most High. Listen, somebody should have been shouting right dead in the middle of that last word, O Most High. And I have come to tell you this morning, today's sermon title is entitled Four Ways to Praise. Can you just go ahead and write that in the comment section this morning? Four Ways to Praise. Amen. Four Ways to Praise. If you don't 
learn nothing else today. You learned the title of today's message, Four Ways to Praise. And I'm going to teach you this morning, and I'm going to educate, educate you and tell you about four ways to praise. Amen. I think going into this Thanksgiving season, we need to learn four ways to praise. Hold on. The title of, of this Psalms reads to the chief, the chief musician, to the tune of death of the son, a psalm of, of David. The title, the title indicates for us that David wrote this song to God himself to a popularly known tune in his day. And in this song, David celebrates the help and goodness of God with a big vision for the nations and some some believe the title or phrase the death of the son is concerning the death of the champion who went out between the camps referring to Goliath and some theologians believe that David wrote this song remembering his victory over Goliath a lot has happened to David a lot has happened to David in his life this morning meaning he, he went from being a shepherd to God's anointed Lord Ann. He loved God. And some of the deepest psalms we cherish today. But he struggled with sins that devastated his family and then his entire kingdom. David, David, he adored. He was adored by his people but yet his own son undermined him and took control of his kingdom David David experienced dimensions of joy and grief that may never touch our lives but somehow his praise to God is still relatable. The same feelings of being overwhelmed and surrounded at the mercy of our enemies. Even when our enemies come in the form of bill collectors, poor health, and then some of our own in-laws. It exists today. And that's why David's example is so powerful on this morning. Whether he was at a high or a low point in his life, he stopped to praise God and give thanks. I need to tell you this again. David, no matter where he was, no matter what he was going through, he stopped to give thanks and praise God. And I need to ask somebody in the room, and as a matter of fact, I need to tell you, right where you are, I know you've been stressing, I know you've been in distress, I know you've been going through, I know that you've been in panic mode because of the pandemic, I know that you've been stressing over finances. I know that you've been stressing over bills and bill collectors. I know that you've been looking down because you don't have no help with your children. But I want to tell you at this very moment, at this very time, to keep pressing your 
your way, to keep praising your way through, no matter how down you get. Keep praising, no matter how many times you've been bogged down. Keep praising, no matter how many times they've given you a big slip. You keep praising, no more stressing as of today. Tell somebody, I'm going to press my way through. Here's the, 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 three, the dramatic thrust of this text today. Regardless, if you are experiencing the highs and lows of life, stop for one moment to praise God and give him thanks. I'll remix it. Regardless, if you are experiencing the highs and lows of life, stop just for a moment to praise God and give, give him, him thanks. Can we walk into this text together this morning? And I want to take my time with it because I want to see you and see this text for what it is on this morning. The first thing I want to point out to you is to thank God. The first thing we need to do is learn how to thank God. This morning, the psalmist, David, he makes a promise to the Lord. Everybody say promise. He makes a promise to the Lord. And I must tell you this morning what a promise is. A promise is a declaration or assurance that one will do a particular thing or that a particular thing will happen. He makes a promise this morning. David says, I will give thanks to you, Lord. And there's a comma right there this morning. David says, I will give you thanks, comma. There's a comma in this verse. The comma allows David to pause and give acknowledgments to the Lord. I'm shouting already. Here, here's the question on hand today. When was the last time you paused to give thanks to the Lord? Yeah, I'm asking a good question this morning. When was the last time you paused to give thanks? When was the last time you had a comma in your life to give God, to give the Lord praise? Hold on. This is this is this 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 King James Version says the word praise. Most other translations say give thanks, but the Hebrew word means to acknowledge God. Everybody say acknowledge for what he has done. David stops, pauses to acknowledge God. And thus many translations render it as give thanks. This same word is used in Psalms 104. What does it say, Reverend Carter? Listen. It's, it's this translation that says be thankful unto him. So it means to acknowledge God. To, to be thankful to him for, for who he is and for what he has done for us. And somebody ought to be screaming and shouting because you ought to be saying I've been acknowledging God. Meaning I've been praising God for all that he has done for me. Not only for last week, for this week, but for right now. I'm thanking God right now just for waking me up. I'm thanking God right now for starting me on my way. I'm thanking God right now for putting breakfast on me and my children's table. Somebody ought to be thanking God 
for right now. So, I need to tell you, thanking God as a means of worship is commanded over and over again in Scripture. Can I show you? Can I prove it to you on this morning? I know somebody out there don't believe me, but I'm going to prove it to you anyway. The text says in Psalms 104, it says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. It says, give thanks to him and bless his name. But then Psalms 136 says, give thanks to the Lord for he is good for his love and kindness is everlasting. But then Philippians 4 and 6 says, be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be known unto God. Ephesians 5 and 20 says, always giving thanks for all things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to God, even the Father. But then 1 Thessalonians 5 and 18 says, in everything give thanks for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And these are just the tip of the iceberg this morning. There are dozens of scriptures, there are dozens of verses which tell us to worship God by giving, by giving thanks. And one reason why giving thanks is so important the reason why giving thanks is so important, I got to say it again so somebody can hear me. The reason why giving thanks is so important is because it helps us to elevate God over our circumstances. I'm going to say it again. The reason why giving thanks is so important because it helps us to elevate God over our circumstances and see most people are only as happy as their circumstances dictate. But when we know the Lord, we always have something we can thank him for and worship him. I need to be shouting at somebody this morning is that the reason why you are shouting, I need to tell you, the reason why you are giving thanks this morning is because you are elevating God over your circumstances. So when you look at the bills, just put just say, God, you got it. Just elevate God over your circumstances. When you're having relationship problems, just elevate God over your relationship. When you're having children problems, just elevate God over your children. And that means you're letting God be responsible for all of those circumstances, for all of those matters. And is there anybody in a room that just want to elevate God? Well, go ahead and just lift your hands up and say, God, I'm at elevating you this morning. I'm coming down so that you can be lifted up. Come on. Somebody. Like David this morning. David, he gives God praise. And I know somebody is out there saying, the Lord is my rock. The Lord is my fortress. The Lord is my deliverer. That's all David was saying when he gives thanks. He said, the Lord is my rock. The Lord is my fortress. The Lord, the Lord is my deliverer. David, David says, I will give thanks to you, comma, Lord. But look how David ends the sentence. He says, with my whole heart, David does not give partial praise. I'm shouting. David does not give partial praise. He gives him full praise because the text says with all my heart and you ought not give God 
this morning partial praise. Amen. You did not wake up. You did not come to sit up in this sanctuary, in this virtual sanctuary to give God partial praise. You came to God, give God full, full praise on this morning because he's not a part-time God. And since he's not a part-time God, don't you give him partial praise. My God, how, how do I know God is a full-time God? I know you're asking me. How do I know, Reverend Carter? How do you know? That God is a full-time God. Because each and every day he protects you all day and all night. He provides for you all day and all night. He supplies your every need all day and all night. And if my grandmama was here, she would say all day and all night. The angels keep watching over me. So you ought to learn how to give God thanks. Learn how to thank God. Can I give you this second principle? Second principle is learn to tell others about God. And this is in the B clause of verse 1. Learn how learn to tell others about God look at David David says I will tell of all your wonderful deeds David makes a second promise and says I will tell of all your wonderful deeds he, he says another way to worship God is to tell other people about the things God has done. I, 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 I need to say that again. David says another way to worship God is to tell other people about the things that God has done. What are you saying to us, Reverend Carter? I hear someone asking me this morning, is telling other people really worship? Come here, baby. Yes, it is. The reason why is telling other people what someone has done can be one of the highest forms of praise. What are you saying? And we do it all the time, but you just don't realize it that you're doing it. Watch this. We praise people indirectly. And that's all I've been seeing all week long. Not by speaking to them necessarily, but by telling others about what they have done. We see it all the time on Facebook. Somebody's on there now. My wife just did this for me. My children just did this for me. My job just did this for me. We tell people indirectly what someone else has done. And the same way that we tell indirectly about what people are doing for us is the same way that we should be sharing with the Lord. But we don't need to do it indirectly. We need to do it directly. Just the way I'm speaking to you. Glory and I'm shouting because of what I know the Lord is about to do. Listen, Satrivia, I'm shouting because I know what the Lord can do. Listen, Babylon, I'm shouting right now because the Lord has been my help in a time of trouble. Listen, I'm telling you right now, Zeke Johnson, that the Lord is going to bring us out of this pandemic. I'm speaking directly to you. And listen, we got to go ahead as Christians and begin to speak directly to people and tell them what the Lord has done. Listen. One way to worship him is by thanking him personally. One way to worship him is to thank him 
personally. But we can also worship him by telling other people about what he has done for us. Look, look, look. I started thinking about this text and I love sports. But something that brings me joy in watching sports it's when uh, ball players win a ball game and somebody is announced the game, the player of the game or the MVP. And normally what the MVP does at the end he always begins his statement with I want to thank God from above for giving me these talents and for blessing me with these skills. He's thanking God. Watch this. He is literally, he is literally telling the whole nation that Jesus is the one who enabled him to do what he did. And I need to tell somebody out there in social media, you need to tell somebody that it was Jesus who allowed you to do what you did. Watch this. And that was an act of worship telling other people what the Lord has done for him, this ball player, that was an act of worship. And watch this. I ain't never been on no national stage. I ain't never been on national TV. But watch this. Regardless if you don't ever get to the national stage, regardless if you don't ever get to national TV, you can still tell the world what the Lord has done for you and for your family. Tell somebody, I ain't got to be on the national stage. I ain't got to make the national news. I ain't got to be on radio. Can I tell you something? Every time you log into Facebook, every time you log into Instagram, every time you log into Snapchat, you on national stage. And baby, you got a right to tell somebody about what the Lord has done. So stop bitter. Stop putting all the junk on Facebook. Stop putting all the mess on Facebook and start giving God glory. He, he says, tell others what the Lord has done. We are missing our opportunity because we are putting mess on FB meaning Facebook, instead of telling people, telling the world what the Lord has done. Luke 9 and 26 says, for whoever, for whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words, of him shall the son of man be ashamed when he shall come in his glory and in his fathers and of the holy angels. He says, in short, if you be ashamed to own me, I'll be ashamed to own you before my father, which is in heaven. Don't be ashamed to tell others about God. Let's go. Look, I brought this picture out because I wanted everybody to see this picture. It says, go tell how much the Lord has done for you. And when you tell, the picture said to me, you ain't got to say nothing. All you got to do is just jump up and shout. And that's what somebody ought to be doing right now. Just jumping up and shout. Girl, go ahead and shout right now because it's on the way. Come on, go ahead and shout now because victory is here. Come on, right now, go ahead and just jump up and shout because you're on your way to a new job. Come on, go ahead and shout now because the, the, the everything that you've been asking for, God is about to release it in this season. Tell somebody, release it. Yeah, tell somebody. Tell somebody. Here's our third, our third principle. The third principle. Learn. And this is the B clause of first two. I put this one first for a reason. Learn to sing to God. Everybody type that in. Learn to sing to God. 
David says, I will sing the praises of your name, O Most High. Here David is listed. He listed a third way to praise God. Watch this. With this whole heart by singing praise to the name of God. I ain't say he was singing nobody else's name. He was singing praises to God. And the idea is to honor and celebrate the character and nature of God. I'm, 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 starting, I'm starting to feel it right there. Honor and celebrate the character and nature of God. He says, I'm going to sing to you, God, because of your character, because of your nature. You ain't no liar. You ain't no cheat. And you ain't deceitful. I'm going to shout and scream because of your nature. And can I tell you something? We ought to be singing because of God's nature. God has always came through. God has never failed us. God has always kept good on his promises. So you ought to be shouting. You ought to be singing because of his character and his nature. Come here. And one of the best ways to worship God is to sing to him. And there are multiple, multiple, multiple commands, Helena, in scripture for God's people to sing to him. If you are a musician, if you are a, a, a musical writer, if you are a songstress, guess what? You ought to be taking these scriptures down. Because in Exodus 15 and 21 it says, Sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. Psalms 9 and 11 says, Sing praise to the Lord who dwells in Zion. Come here. I ain't done. Psalms 47, 6 and 7 says, Sing praise to to our God, sing praises, sing praises to our King, sing praises, for God is King over all earth, sing praises with a skillful song, listen, five times just in this one short passage, it commands us to worship God by singing to him, hear me now, Singing is one of the most important means we have of worshiping God. He, watch this, this is why virtually every Christian church takes significant portions of our service to sing. Singing is worship. Watch this. That's why we begin worship with uh, devotion. And in devotion, it has us singing songs like, Father, I stretch my hands to thee. That's why in devotion it says, no other help I know. That's why in devotion it says, if thou wilt draw thou shalt from me, rather shall I go. We're singing praise to God. But then we come back and have praise and worship. And somebody said, when praises go up, blessings really will come down. That's why I need you to keep singing even now because some blessings are about to fall, about to run out. Is there anybody that needs some blessings this morning? David says, I will sing. David says, I will sing praise to your name. So he's just not just singing. He is singing praise. And he is singing it to God. Somebody ought to be shouting in this room. When God's people, watch this, come here. Come here, hear me now. Hear me now. This is so important. We need to understand 
that when we sing here in our services, it is just not a single long time. We are singing to God, and he is our one and only audience member. Amen. Get that. So, here's our fourth and final point on this morning. This is the last principle, and we'll close this message out. Learn to be happy in God. Say it to us, Reverend Carter. Learn to be happy in God. What are you saying? And this one here is a little different. It's not so much of something we do as it is something we are. It is a state of being satisfied in the Lord. I will be glad and exalt you. And I will exalt in you. And when God's people are happy in him, it is one of the best expressions of worship. Being happy in God himself and not in our circumstances. David here described the fourth way to praise God by simply finding and expressing gladness and joy in God. And this is the simplest, the simplest way to find rest and celebrate by because of God's goodness and grace, greatness and kindness that he has expressed upon all of us. So watch this, and I'm going to leave you alone. Being happy does not mean you have it all, but it, but it means being thankful to the Lord for all you have. I'll say it again. Being happy does not mean you have it all, but it means being thankful to the Lord for all you have. May God be a blessing to all of the hearers of his holy word on this morning. God, he says, if you praise me, he says, you don't have to worry about a thing. He says, I got you covered. All I want you to do is give me praise. I leave you with this, this statement from this little girl this morning that's on, the, that's on the screen, but she's also on the swing. The little girl, little girl says, true happiness is found in the will of God and not in our desires being fulfilled. Once again, true happiness is found in the will of God not in our desires being fulfilled. I want to tell you is to continue to worship and praise God like none other because God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ever think or imagine. Listen, if there be one today, if there be one, if you want to be saved, just come on in this room. Come on, come on, just tell somebody, say, I want to be saved. Come on, tell somebody, say, I want to be saved. this room and there are three ways that you can come to a Baptist church by letter of experience Christian ex by Christian experience a candidate for baptism baptism we invite you to come come on come while the blood is running warm in your van we invite you to come this morning we invite you to come amen and when you come forms or four forms of, of praise with you. God is here for you. Just come walking down the aisle and nobody cares 
We're going to shout at you this morning. We're going to sing with you. But most of all, we're going to praise with you. Come on, somebody. Whoever wants to be saved, go ahead and put it in the comment section. I want to be saved on today. Amen. If you want a new church home, come on on, on, on this side. Amen. And make the Lord your choice. Can we all say that? I don't care what my financial or physical condition may be. Oh, 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 oh day. Lord, Lord, Lord. The angels. You can sing it. Father God, Lord, how we thank you for another day, another worship experience. God, we thank you for this day and for this church known as the Main Street Missionary Baptist Church. God, I ask now, we're praying for that sinner man, that sinner woman that had in their heart to come, but were too afraid. God, I ask that you would strengthen their minds, strengthen their hearts, and let them know that there is nothing to be afraid of because all of their help comes from thee. Now, Father, if you would be so kind, God, stir up another gift in us, God, so that we may continue to proclaim your gospel in such a way that your people understand. God, thank you for never failing us and always sticking right by our side. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And we say it together, amen. Listen, I want to tell you, Name Street, is that on the fourth Sunday, we will share communion. The fourth Sunday, we're going to share communion. So please, 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 I will be preaching from the church. If you would like to attend, please be more than welcome to come. Amen. We have the necessary things in place uh, that will keep you safe. Please bring your mask and we will do the rest. Amen. Also, I'm asking that all children get online this week. This will be our last week of uh, children's ministry until the new year. Amen. Amen. And then... Uh, there will be no message Monday, no message Monday uh, on this Monday, but there will be our final Bible study, final Bible study, women of the nine, and, and uh, Wednesday night Bible study, live in 45, our last year of Bible study. All we're going to have now is remain, is is worship services, and worship services, and worship service ending our year. Also, if you would be so kind, Sister Chelsea Willis has sent out emails. She's also sent out one calls, uh, and Sister Lisa Franklin has posted our surveys online for social media. Uh, I need you to fill out those survey surveys and be as honest as possible. Be as honest as possible. The reason why we ask for the age because. We want to know the uh, the membership status, the ages that we have within our congregation. Amen. That tells us a whole lot about what we need to do ministry-wise going forward. So if you don't be, if you're not truthful, we don't have realistic information. I need you to be as honest as possible, especially as you're filling out the survey. This this survey does not pertain to your name. It's just a survey with the inf pertinent information that we need as leaders of the church to get our church reopened, coming back in 2021. Listen, I want to tell you thank you for your attendance, but also I need everyone to make sure that you are doing right by God with your tithe and your offering. Listen, we know that the calendar T is coming up, and the calendar T is when we uh, finish the year out on a strong note. I have asked you to give $300 or to the best of your, your, your ability, meet that. Amen. Amen. We have not asked you for anything this entire year. But this year, we're closing out 2020 on giving. Amen. And I need you to do your very best to meet those, to meet those requirements. Amen. Amen. God bless you. And God keep you, Ninth Street, is our personal prayer for you and for your family. Listen. May the works that we've done. May the works that we've done speak for all of us. 
Now, let's make it personal. May the works I've done speak for me. Listen, God bless you. And until next week, we'll see you later. And I want to tell you that we love you. Our mission statement here at Main Street is saving the lost at any cost. Monday of the month, Ninth Street Missionary Baptist Church prayer line is hosted at 7.30 a.m. You can dial into the conference line at 605-475-2875, access code 647-4067-POUND. Again, that is 605-475-2875, access code 647-4067, or meet us on Facebook Live. Every Monday is Message Monday, hanging with the Carters at 7 p.m. via the conference line or Facebook Live. Message Monday at 7 p.m. Every Tuesday is Ladies Night. It is the Powder Room with the Women of the Nine virtual Bible study at 7 p.m. Meet us on Facebook Live or by conference line. Tuesdays at 7 p.m. It goes up every Wednesday for Live and 45 with our very own Pastor Carter. Bible study starts at 7 p.m. You can meet us by way of Facebook Live or on the conference line. Again, Live and 45 Bible study every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Who's next? Next Gen's next. Every Monday at 6 p.m. is our children's check-in on Tuesday is Talk About It Tuesday at 7.45 p.m. And then on Saturday, it is Story Time Saturday for our little ones. Meet us on Facebook Live at the 9th Street Next Gen Youth Ministry page. You can give your offering and tithe by way of Cash App at dollar sign T-H-A number 9 M-B-C. Again, that's dollar sign the 9 M-B-C on Cash App. You can also give by our Tithely app by locating 9th Street M-B-C. Again, that's our Tithely app, 9th Street M-B-C. You can also give by per in person from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. on Saturdays at the 9th Street Missionary Baptist Church, 1023 North 9th Street, Fort Smith, Arkansas. If you'd like to give to our pastor's love offering, you can do so by cash app at dollar sign C-A-N-D-B-S-P. Again, that's dollar sign C-A-N-D-B-S-P. Ninth Street Missionary Baptist Church. Remember, our mission statement is saving the lost at any cost.